Uh, just next thing that's available is good for me. Yo, what's up, SEDQ? <laughs> hey, everyone. Come on. Oh, We're not guys, that sleepy yet. <laughs> wow. That's excellent. Okay, so yeah, it's um, Gimmick once again, and uh, we'll be running Best Ending. It was a donation incentive that was reached. Um, of course, that uh, Best Ending is 100%. Otherwise, uh, we'll be saving the girl. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yay. Um, so just a quick roll call here. My name's Aquas. I'm Edobean. Cypher here. Uh, Nars223. Yeah, um, so I'm going to stay a, a little bit focused for most of the run, so I'll probably just uh, be making some screams, um, some <laughs> shouts uh, <laughs> when I, in, probably, hopefully I don't screw up or something, but uh, I'll, stay, I'll stay focused for the most part, um, and then these guys will uh, kind of run it down. Uh, anything you want to say before I get started, uh, now's probably the time to do it. Um, not much, like... The, f the very first screen is actually a very critical screen, and uh, he might do some different things that we'll have to explain here, but hopefully he won't have any issues with this screen. We can explain more about the game mechanics as the game goes on. Yeah, definitely. So, once again, since he's doing a uh, best thing, he's going to be collecting all items uh, in every stage. Can we get the, the left TV turned off? Okay. Can we get the left TV turned off? No, go <laughs> just practicing this very first uh, star ride. It's actually one of the hardest star rides in the whole game, so I'm just trying to make sure I get it, because if I kind of screw it up, it messes up the point route, and these guys are going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, pretty much ready to get in this, so yeah, gimmick. Summer Games Done Quick 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Three, two... One, go. All right. Gimmick is a cute and amazing game by Sunsoft. And so the best ending run, you have to collect six special items, one per stage, in order to access the seventh secret stage and defeat the final boss there. And Gimmick has a very unique mechanic where you have to manage your points throughout the run. Points determine when items drop upon killing enemies. And it's not random. An item will drop when the tens and hundreds digit of your score are the same digit. So he's going to collect some bombs at the end of this stage from the boss. And well, he's going to collect one right now. But you want three bombs heading into the beginning of stage two. So he's going to collect one off the boss here. See, he's got 440. And then he'll collect a third bomb at the beginning of the second stage. And so this, in, this entire run is based around your points that you get. You need to have the right items for the right bosses and to do a few strats. And as you can see, this star is the central weapon in the run. Uh, you use it a lot to travel quickly and reach places you wouldn't normally be able to reach, such as that treasure you know, at the very beginning of stage one. Right here is going to do a very difficult trick. That's and one he of the skips a good portion of the level there. And there's another one coming up right now. Yeah! All right. All right. I can go home happy, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Stage two is like the big possible choke point of the run. Uh, those two tricks, if you miss either one of them, it wastes a lot of time. AKA pure embarrassment. Yeah. It's we don't want that. Very, very scary for a live marathon run, but Aquas did it. <clears throat> Wee! <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and this next enemy, uh, he's sleeping on the job, and if we take too long, then he'll actually wake up, which we don't want. And so we just push him off. Simple as that. And so coming up here is the waterfall skip, and since the incentive got met, he will not be doing it. So it's unfortunate that we don't get Sorry. to see that in a GDQ run here, but... Well, that's probably uh, the oh, hardest thing to do oh, in the game. No. Oops. <laughs> that is that's a very tricky sh uh, star shot because there are logs that come down from the top. And um, if you get hit by one, it's really bad news. I don't 
thick and nice and easy. This <laughs> yeah. Time. Yeah, for those who like have never played this game, this game is just it is ridiculously hard to do and it's amazing seeing these speedrunners do this game. Yeah, it might look kinda simple ish, but um the physics are not too intuitive. And the enemies as well, they have very unique AI for an NES game. They actually move according to your position, sort of. Most NES games, they sort of like keep spawning infinitely in the same spot or that kind of thing. But this game is very finely tuned. And there's your neighbor, Totoro. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah, and when you hit a slope, you start going faster too. So depending on how fast you're going, uh, your inputs are going to have to be different. All right, this boss coming up, uh, he specifically, specifically has three bombs routed for this boss. You'll see why. Oh, we missed that one. It's like eight seconds lost, eh? So we actually get to see the so boss notice, this time. You'll notice he waited for the snail to stop moving in order to hit him with the star. If he had no bombs, he would have had to do that three times. So he was able to save a lot of time there. Stage 4 is actually a very technical stage. There's a lot of star shots and uh, tight tricks going on. And this run there is a new glitch found that will be showcased at the end of here that he'll be doing. Yeah, right. this, this glitch was found within the past year, so this is the first time that it's being showcased in a GDQ run. It was actually, I think, a week before AGDQ. And so oh, was it? They oh, didn't want right, to do it yeah. for the race. Yeah. Oh, that's sexy. That, that right there, strangely enough, is one of the hardest things to do in the game. Yeah, that, that star ride back there is uh, one of the make the deal breakers for a good run in this game. You can miss it a few times and it sucks. And so he needs a bomb coming up here, so he's good. Nice kill. <coughs> and just carefully skip that ledge so you can grab the item. Wee! Yeah. <laughs> wee! Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> then he just falls down. <laughs> you all clapped too early. Still wee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's good. Okay, so now on this boss here, he's going to throw a bomb, and this bomb is going to cause basically a sprite overflow on the screen, which messes up some memory. And so uh, Yumitaro, or gimmick, I guess, is his uh, hitbox is going to be a lot smaller, and so he gets uh, zipped through ceilings. Oh. There we go. There we go. Nice. All right, it's going to look a little weird. Don't worry. <laughs> Just a little. All right, we're back to normal now. <laughs> So he basically uh, warped from the second screen of the stage to the middle of the stage. And I think that's just because of the way the rooms are arranged in the game's memory. But that was because of the glitch that was activated at the end of stage four. And the glitch will be in effect until either a game over or reset. You also notice he kind of jumped into the ceiling there right before the conveyor belt screen. Uh, you can get tiny little speed boosts doing that throughout the rest of the run. Oh, there goes a bomb. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's okay. Now, stage six used to be a gauntlet of very <laughs> difficult rooms. Yeah. Now it's simply... Uh, hit this pretty precise trick coming up here. Yeah, this is the look easy, but it's actually pretty difficult to hit every time. Oh, oh yep. no. Try again. Yeah. It's definitely not easy, and, and even if he does it, like, if he manages to die, he will come back all the way here, so... And so he needs to be going up the slope and get hit. There and it go. pushes him down below. I believe it's only possible to do that with the glitch activated. That was also found within the past two months, I want to say. Yeah. By a guy with a lightsaber, so shout-outs to him. Shout-outs to guy with a lightsaber. 
That's right. Yeah, he accidentally found it when he was playing one day. <laughs> Got us all excited. <laughs> oh, not that one. Oh, so this room's tricky here. <laughs> Maybe this one? So going out of the room or reset the room for him and he's able all to... Right. Yeah, good job. That's not an easy jump right there. And so throwing that star in the room before this will actually make uh, the wizard do a specific pattern every single time. Otherwise, it's somewhat random. Nice. Oh, missed him that time. Urgh, don't hit me. Oh, you jerk. Urgh. There we go. This wizard gauntlet is actually <laughs> pretty hard um, with that glitch that we do early in stage six because you have very little health for this entire oh, yeah. series oh, of bosses. Yeah, the wizards are definitely trolls. This final wizard in particular can move very randomly. A lot of different things can happen. It's got, you kind of got to wing it fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, All right. Nice. <laughs> Round two was excellent. That was, that was pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so this is the extra level here that yeah. you wouldn't normally have if you didn't get all the items. Mm -hmm. Maybe we get the bad ending, unfortunately. But nope, we're going to save the girl. So <laughs> So the plot of this story is that um, the girl in the opening cutscene gets a new toy, which is Yume Taro, or the green figure you're seeing right now. And the other toys get jealous and kidnap her to this. Oh, nice. Uh, nice. Nice. That's really cool. Nice. Nice. It's a very difficult thing to do. Right in the sweet tooth right there. <laughs> so they, they kidnap tooth. her. And... Um, She's being held in this stage, which you can't access without getting the six items that we were collecting throughout the stages, the normal stages. And so with the glitch active here, he can't actually jump up and up the screen here. It's not possible. So he has to kill himself, and it'll, he'll start up above now. Yeah. He showed this screen for one or two frames, and then uh, he dies so that it recognizes this as the checkpoint. Oh, nope. That's a sinker. <coughs> Good read. <laughs> One final Wii. <laughs> now we get to fight the action figure, as I like to call it, since they're all her toys. All right, in the bag. Time is uh, when the screen transitions to black. It'll be in about five seconds. All right. Time. Good job. Great run. What was the time? What was the time? 1027. The time was 1027. Excellent, excellent. Yo, 927 is pretty cool. Uh, <coughs> first sub 10 for a gimmick in uh, GDQ. Thanks. Oh, 1027. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, still, we still got your hopes and dreams there. I'm still sorry. 11, 10, 1030. Still good, still good. I hope you guys liked that. Was that sick or what? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, this is definitely like one of the most ridiculous speedruns and it looks cute, it looks adorable, but it is definitely not easy. So definitely props to Aquas and our guys on our cash commentary for it, so. I can also speak from experience that this is a very nerve wracking <laughs> run to do at a live marathon and uh, special props to Aquas for taking on the challenge. Yeah, you look, uh, whenever I watch your run, you always look super like you're about to literally die. Like, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, die IRL. Yeah, like that's something right. serious is happening. <laughs> yeah, Cypher is the godfather of gimmick. Definitely. And probably like five other games. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> also, show us the Beckerad if uh, we didn't. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. raced him at the last GDQ race, um, but yeah, shout out to Beckred, of course. Um, and we saved the girl, so all is well. Um, SGDQ can resume. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>